everyone welcome back to my channel today i am bringing you the skull short stroke pants because i'll be explaining how to turn these into long pants at the end of the video so today i'll be teaching you how to make these simple um simple skull shorts and uh for those who haven't yet checked out the previous videos we already have a matching bucket hat and a matching jacket or um, sweater for these shirts or pants for the materials you will need yarn and for the yarn i'm using seal it's a three ply chunky yarn and you'll need three colors of this i'll use orange white and black so um the yarn that you'll need the most is the boundary color which is the black for me so uh this you'll need just maybe quarter a ball to just do the ribbing but uh for the white you will need one full ball of yarn then you will also need a crochet hook i'm using a seven millimeter crochet hook and a five millimeter crochet hook this one is for the main body of the skulls and then um the ribbing is worked with a five millimeter then you also need a pair of scissors to cut your ends because there are so many ends to weave in at the end of the projects and then you also need a darning needle to weave in your ends and then you'll need a measuring tip i'll let you know how to use the measuring tip as we go along so let's get started and learn how to make this beautiful shirt so we're going to start off with a skull and we're going to start with the white bit which is in the middle of the uh, granny square so you're going to make a slip knot sorry a magic ring so you just do this like that and then grab your hook and pull on the working yarn like that and then you're going to hold remove your fingers and hold that point you should be having something that looks like this and then you're going to make a chain of two and that chain of two doesn't count as a stitch you're going to go into the magic ring with a total of nine double crochets so for a double crochet you yarn over insert your hook into the magic ring pull up a loop you will have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that's our very first double crochet and then yarn over insert your hook into the same magic ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that's the second double crochet we are going to continue to place double crochets until we have a total of nine double crochets into the magic ring so this is four five six seven eight and nine so we have a total of nine double crochets not including the chain two at the beginning of the round of the round so after your nine double crochets you're going to make a chain of five and then go into the magic ring with a double crochet and then you're going to make a chain of three double crochet into the same exact magic ring and chain five and then go into the very first double crochet that you made and place one slip stitch so for a slip stitch you insert your hook into the stitch pull up a loop and then pull through so that's how we've ended our round you should have something that looks like this and now we are going to get our tail and close it you're going to just pull on it so that we close the magic ring this is the magic ring right here so when you pull the tail you can see the magic ring closing up so this is uh, the end of round one and you can see the skull head has already been formed and then now we are going to chain one 
single crochet into the same exact stitch single crochet into the next and continue to single crochet into each and every stitch until we get to the chain space so we have our single crochets into all the nine um, double crochets below into the chain five space you're going to place a total of six single crochets three four five and six and then we are going to go into the next chain three space we're going to start with a slip stitch into it then you're going to chain two and double crochet two times into the same exact space one two and then you're going to chain two and slip stitch into the same space the same chain three space and then you're going to go into the next chain five space with a total of six single crochets So after your six single crochets, you're going to go into the first single crochet that you made with a slip stitch. Like that. And then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. This marks the end of the first color. So after this, you should have the definite head uh, shape of the skull. And now we are going to introduce our second color. For me, this is going to be black because it's what I used for the tutorial. But I'm going to try my best to explain and show you exactly what I did. I know black can be um, a bit challenging when we are working tutorials because it's hard to see. So. You're going to start off with a slip knot. And then you are going to go into the stitch after the stitch where you place the slip stitch. So into this one. And you're going to attach your black yarn. Like that. Now you're going to chain three and that counts as a double crochet. Go into the same exact stitch with one double crochet. Chain three. Go into the same stitch with two double crochets. So that means the first stitch has two double crochets. Chain two, chain three, two double crochets. Two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets into the very first stitch. Now you're going to place one double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. So those are half double crochets. One double crochet into the next stitch. In the next, you're going to place two double crochets. chain three and two more double crochets into the same exact stitch and you can see we've formed our second corner the chain three spaces create the corners of uh, the skull granny square so after this you're going to place one half double crochet into each of the next four stitches so one two three and four then after this you're going to place one double crochet into the next stitch into the next stitch you're going to place two double crochets this is a corner so two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets 
okay this is what we have one double crochet into the next stitch and now um, we are going to go into the next double crochet we're going to skip over the chain two that we have here go on top of the first stitch the first double crochet and place a single crochet single crochet into the next uh, stitch and then we are going to go into the chain the top chain of the chain two and we are going to place one single crochet so that's a total of three single crochets across the lower jaw of the skull so we are going to go into the next stitch with one double crochet we are going to place a corner into the next stitch so two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets okay so that's our uh, our last corner because the first one is here the second one is here third and fourth and then into the next four stitches you're going to place one half double crochet into each one two three and four and then um, into that stitch where we placed a slip stitch remember we didn't place a stitch in there so we're going to go into that space with one double crochet and then at this point you can go on top of the chain three at the beginning of your round and you're going to place one slip stitch and now we've turned the skull into a square now uh, we're going to chain three and that counts as our very first double crochet you're going to go into the next stitch with one double crochet so from now on we are going to just place one double crochet into each stitch and in each uh, chain three space we shall place two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets so now we are at the chain three space so we're going to place two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets now we're going to go into each and every stitch after that with only one double crochet into each stitch until we get to the chain three space okay so into the chain three space you're going to place two double crochets chain three and two more double crochets And then um, one double crochet into each of the next stitches and we're going to repeat this all the way around until we come back to the beginning of the round
So I'm placing my last double crochets of the round before I get to the very first double crochet or the chain three at the beginning of the round. So I've placed my last double crochet into that very last stitch which is here and I'm going to go on top of the very first chain three that I made for the round and I'm going to make a slip stitch. So this is what we have for our skull. All right guys, so um, after making your very first square, you're going to measure it. And uh, I have about five inches in length across. And since it's a square, we have the same exact measurement on the opposite side as well. So um, five inches, you're going to make many of these so that you get a measurement that goes around your waist and beyond. So I'm considering a waist measurement of around 26 inches. So if I have three of these, let's try and take that measurement. We have about 16 inches, which is um, times two is 32. So you're going to have to arrange your skulls, your granny squares in a way that you get a measurement beyond your waist measurement because this shirt has to pass through the hips as well. So um, we have 16 here and um, if we add one more like this, this is going to become way too big. So you're going to find a good balance for your uh, for your size so since this is 16 and remember we are going to do two legs so this is the first leg so if I'm considering 27 28 inches of hip of of the waist then that means this has to be about 28 divided by 2 is around 14 and this is 16 which is more forgiving so uh, I'm going to go with this arrangement so um you're going to turn your skulls to the wrong side like this and then you're going to get the next set of three and we are going to start joining so for those people who have already tried out the cardigan you know exactly what is going on here we're going to start joining our skulls together in order to form the leg uh, portion. So this is our very first leg. So I'm going to get my five millimeter crochet hook, as you can see here. And I grab my yarn as well. So I'm going to start joining. And uh, the first join that I'm going to do is the one that joins across all the uh, the squares so just go into the chain three and place attach your yarn you're going to grab your hook and go into the very the other thing that you need to note sorry all the skulls should be facing the same direction so you can see all of them are facing upwards so you're going to start with this part here you're going to go into the chain three space and we're going to attach our yarn we're going to first deal with the first two uh, squares so after attaching your yarn you are going to go into the same space with a single crochet then you're going to single crochet across well going into each and every stitch into um, both the squares so that we can join them so we are single crocheting into um, the granny square on this side and the granny square on this side and matching the stitches together just make sure you don't miss anything so that we finish at the same point on both granny squares so you're going to just go into each and every stitch with one granny square, one single crochet, sorry. I 
um, when it comes to the space here you're going to go into it with one single crochet and now we are done with the first two granny squares we are done joining them and now we're going on to the second pair of the granny squares so cross over into the chain three space and you're going to make one single crochet and single crochet all the way across going into the stitches on both ends of each granny square okay so this is how your work will look like when you make the uh, single crochet row across the granny squares that we selected for the first leg now you're going to get one more square and you're going to add it to this side and make sure it's also facing the wrong side and instead of going across like this we are going to join it at this point here so just go into the chain three space and the chain three space on this one and continue to join while um, going into each and every stitch with one single crochet I'll explain to you what this is going to create so just go all the way down and we are attaching um, one square on the bottom line of the leg all right so one single crochet into the chain three space now you're going to chain one and you're going to cut your yarn and let me show you what we have after that <clears throat> This is what you're going to have so whatever number of squares that you have here you're going to have to do one extra granny square on the bottom line so we have four and then three up if you have four here if you have a total of four squares then you're going to have one extra one here on the bottom so you will have five so we're going to also do the same exact thing on this side we're going to add one square so get your square and turn it to the wrong side and you're going to join it just like we did for the other one so attach your yarn into the chain three space and start joining the granny squares so the process of joining is the same you shouldn't be worried about that but uh, what you have to make sure you do is to have um, your granny squares face the same exact direction throughout Alright, so we are coming to the end of the joining of the last granny square and you're going to chain one and cut your yarn, pull through and this is what you're going to have. Now we are going to join these spaces as well so that we get rid of these separations. So get your your yarn and this time we are going to run all the way from here all the way down so attach
and go into each and every stitch with one single crochet Sorry, the power had gone off. Um, All right, so we are coming to the end of the first joining and we shall go into the chain three space with one single crochet and then cross over to this separation here and do the same exact thing. So go into the chain three space with one single crochet and continue to join stitch to stitch all the way down. Alright, we are coming to the end and I'm placing one single crochet into the chain three space and then chain one and cut your yarn. Sorry. Okay, pull through. And this is what we have. So we are going to continue to do this, uh, this same exact thing here onto this part so that we get rid of this separation here so that we have a block joining just like we've done here and then i'll meet you back and show you what to do next so here we are we are done with this and you're going to fold over your work like this and this will be our very first leg so you're going to go ahead and do the same exact process for a second panel um, if you have a different arrangement, just make sure you mirror that same exact arrangement for your second leg and then I'll be back to show you what to do next. Okay guys, so I have finished making both my panels and this is what everything looks like. You can see the protruding part and then we also have the same thing happening on this side. So, um... We're going to do something a little bit unique, um, something different from what we usually do to our pants or shorts. I'm going to create more coverage towards the back side. So um, I'm going to make one more skull and this skull is going to be placed at an angle. That skull won't be uh, facing upwards, but somehow um, when it's put together with these pieces, it blends into this uh, system very well so i'm going to go ahead and attach this granny square just place your work like this so that the protruding uh, granny squares are on the inside part and then just bring them close like this and the side where we are placing this extra granny square is the back side of our shirt so let's just do this open it up and turn your skull to the wrong side like that and we are going to start joining that uh, square it's almost the same exact thing as joining it to this side because we have the same thing happening on both sides so uh, grab your yarn 
and your five millimeter crochet hook and start from here i'm right-handed so i'm going to start working all the way down like this this until i make it all the way around so just join like we've been joining for the previous granny squares stitch to stitch and when it comes to the chain three spaces you will place one single crochet so this shirt has been a little bit challenging when it comes to the construction i don't know why maybe because the granny squares are are not like um in the dimensions that i wanted them to be so and i wanted them to match exactly what we have for the jacket so that we have a matching set so i didn't want to make very small granny squares at the end of the day so that has messed me up a bit but i'm trying to find a way to work it out so after this then you go to the chain three space on the next granny square and start attaching as well All right, chain three space and this is what we have you can see we finished joining here and here now we are joining onto this part and the the other part so let me just turn my work like this and I start joining to this side as well All right, so we're going to start joining the last side of the extra granny square, which is this side here. All right, so we're coming to the end of the joining and I'll go into the very first single crochet that I made and place a slip stitch just to close it up very well. And I'll chain one. Let me get a pair of scissors. And you're going to cut your yarn at this point. Just cut your yarn. And this is what we have. So remember, our work was placed like this before. 
and we have managed to place that extra granny square for the back side now when it comes to the front side you see uh there's something missing here and we are not going to place any granny square there because that will make the shirt way too big and also create a funny fitting so what i'm going to do is to turn my work to the wrong side just watch what i'm doing right now uh, my work is on the right side up here but when i do this it's going to the wrong side so just fold over your work like this almost uh it's like what we had before something like this so i hope it makes sense we've just turned it to the wrong side now um we're going to join from here joining onto this and close up this whole space i hope you've seen what i've done we're going to just make uh, a joining from up to down across these two granny squares and then after that we shall see what to do next so the part that doesn't have the extra granny square is the right is the front part of the shirt all right All right, so we've finished with the first uh, two granny squares and we are still going down. As you can see, we finished this. So we go into the next two granny squares and start joining as well, just like we did for the first two. So make sure your work is on the wrong side at this point. All the joinings are done on the wrong side. Okay, so we are done with the next two granny squares, and this is what we have. This is what we have. Now you're going to place your work like this. Just watch what I'm doing. I'm going to join, you should be having something that looks like this. So there's this panel here of two granny squares, and then there's this V. So I'm going to join, because my yarn is already attached, I am going to start joining onto this part, this one. So just go one side. If you decide to go with the other one, then you're going to join the two granny squares here. So go into the chain three space and join. all right so i'm loving this because i'm going for the buggy look um i'm not going for shirts that are like very tight so we're going for pants that are loose fitted that's why um i gave you that shaping all right so after this you will chain one cut your yarn and then you join the other two granny squares you remember the space that we left behind here 
So just attach your yarn. And join the two granny squares on that part, on that opening. All right, so this is my last single crochet and I'm going to chain one and cut my yarn and pull through. So see what we have right now. Um, remember the part that doesn't have the extra granny square is the front part and this is our front part. And then when it comes to the back side, we have an extra granny square going on in the middle. And when we turn our work to the right side, this is what you're going to have it has a weird look right now but after the final shaping you'll see what happens so this is exactly what you will have and now um, I think we should go to the waistband first and then we come back to the lower part of the shorts to see what we can do to improve it so uh, you're going to get your five millimeter crochet hook because it's the one that does the ribbing and the joining and everything else and you're going to grab your yarn I am going for the same um, ribbing color as the cardigan so I'm going with orange so you're going to attach your yarn at any point i'll attach it at the back side of my shirt and then i go into any chain three space like that and then you're going to make a chain of six single crochet into the second chain from the hook and continue to single crochet all the way down you will have a total of five single crochets after that you're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches turn your work single crochet back loop only into each and every single crochet from the previous row so you should be having a total of five single crochets after that chain one turn your work single crochet back loop only into each of the five single crochets and after that you're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches turn your work single crochet back loop only into each of the five single crochets and we're going to repeat that all the way around the waistband of our shirt. Chain one turn, single crochet back loop only. Okay, slip stitch into the next two stitches. Turn your work, single crochet back loop only in each of the five single crochets. So do that all the way around. I'll meet you back when we are done making the waistband of our shirt. So this is what I was saying. Uh, you can see this skull is at an angle, but it doesn't actually overshow that it's even at an angle. So well, this is something that I forgot to mention. Uh, before you start the waistband, you're going to have to try on your shirt. Uh, ignore this part you're going to have to try on your shirt and make sure it's at the level where you want it if it's not then you're going to work some rows of 
double crochets around so that you lift the length of the shirt to that level where you want your shirt to sit and then uh, after that you just do the waistband just like um, I'm about to show you alright guys I have made it all the way around the waistband and you guys can see how cute the shirts are at least at the top and um, the moment you're done uh, working around the waistband you're going to chain one and turn your work to the wrong side and you're going to start joining um, stitch to stitch so that we close up the waistband ribbing so you're going to go into each and every stitch with um, one slip stitch so You can use a darning needle if you wish. But I'm going to just slip stitch into each and every stitch all the way across the waistband. Okay. And then the last one. All right, after this, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. I know we have so many ends to weave in, but we shall get there. So this is what you're going to have for your waistband. And we've ended the waistband on the back side of the shirt. Now, so um, this is the front side of the shirt and this is the back side. Now you're going to get so you're going to get the same exact yarn because um, you may need a drawstring in the waist area. So you just get your yarn. I'm using orange because it's going to pass through this part. So you're going to make a simple chain of about 120 chains. So I ended up doing a total of 150 chains and you're going to get your darning needle, put it through, put your chain through and we're going to put this drawstring all the way around the waistband. I don't know where you prefer to put it but um, I'm going to just go in and out of every two rows. Just watch what I'm doing. I'm putting the drawstring on the exact middle point of the of the ribbing so that it just disappears there. Right. So I wish I had done about 200 chains. I think that would be the best. But now I have to work with 150 because that's what I have. I feel like it's too short. Okay, let me do this. This is the last part. You're going to remove your darning needle and then you're going to pull your shirt. This should be the exact middle, the joining there. So once you pull this, you are going to make a knot. Make sure your shirt is balanced.
all right so this is what we have for the waistband the drawstring and everything that goes with the upper part of the shirt here you can decide to add tassels beads whatever you wish to add to accessorize your shirt now at this point the general shape of the shirt has been achieved as you can see here now if you want to make your shirt turn your shirt into long pants or make it longer using the skulls you're going to just consider this lower part we have these skulls we have a total of one two three four and five skulls around each leg hole so whatever number of skulls that you have around the leg hole is the same number of skulls that you're going to do for your next row or round all the way down so you will keep attaching those skulls under the skulls that are already there to get the length of the shirt that you want for yourself so for me this is basically it this is how the back side of the skull of the shirts <laughs> looks like and uh, okay the last thing is to weave in all your ends you're going to use your dunning needle as much as you can to weave in each and every end on the shirt so that we can get a very neat finish at the end of our project and i think this is the last part it's the most hectic because you're just so excited to see the final piece but you can't photograph it with all these loose ends on it so take your time and weave in all your ends um if you want to create an edging please go ahead and do that but i think this is the basic shirt that i could come up with for you guys and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did don't forget to subscribe to the new channel which is this one and i will see you in my next video bye